You're watching UNICEF Television. One year on, Haiti is still struggling with the aftermath of the devastating earthquake of January the 12th, 2010. A disaster that had a profound impact on children. More than 200,000 people died, perished in the earthquake. Half of them probably were children. Many, many people were displaced, internally displaced. Half of them were children again probably a million of children. Many of these children, if not all, they suffered, they were injured, they, they were traumatized. Many of these children, in fact, lost the life that they had before. Today, more than a million people remain in overcrowded camps, including an estimated 380,000 children. Children like six-year-old Judeline Brassier, who lost her father when the family's home collapsed. Of course, we will also always say that we can be frustrated. We will always say that we haven't done enough, but we are coming from far, even before the earthquake. So I think we have made many achievements. None more important perhaps than getting children back to school. UNICEF has rebuilt 57 destroyed schools for children like Judeline with many more underway. Schools which besides providing education play a crucial supportive role. They are traumatized really. But at school we try to give them the hope, to talk to them, to put them in an environment so they can at least support them. UNICEF has ensured that children living in the camps are provided with safe water and child-friendly spaces, making sure they have access to vaccinations and health services, preventing them from becoming malnourished and protecting them from harm. But the earthquake was not the only unprecedented emergency Haiti suffered in 2010. The cholera outbreak that became an epidemic and that is now endemic in this country was also unprecedented. It blew up. We have more than 100,000 cases and we know that we, have, we will have more. Combined with hurricane flooding and a political crisis, cholera in particular has presented a massive challenge. UNICEF played a key role in the rapid response to the outbreak by mobilizing staff, resources and life-saving supplies and has since helped set up 72 cholera treatment centers. But these successive crises have slowed the progress of recovery. Some areas, we're still in what's called the relief phase, uh, getting rid of the rubble, rebuilding the schools. Uh, it's been very slow. But I think we shouldn't think about it in phases anyway. And everything we're doing now in the relief area ought to be with an eye on where we want to be farther down the road. The earthquake and cholera epidemic have also highlighted Haiti's deep and long-standing disparities and reinforced UNICEF's focus on equity. When uh, you see the situation here and you realize that there are so many things to do and you sometimes you do not know where to start. But when you focus on equity, you say, okay, my role here is to work with the most vulnerable. UNICEF has redoubled its work in the most impoverished neighborhoods of the capital, Port-au-Prince, working with the government and other partners to ensure water is chlorinated, distributing water purification tablets and providing essential information on cholera prevention. But reaching the most vulnerable in Haiti extends beyond the cities. Working with its partners, UNICEF has sought to reach remote rural communities, flying in basic health supplies, setting up semi-permanent schools, giving children opportunities they never had before. While challenges faced in addressing the country's successive crises remain enormous, UNICEF will strive to meet Haiti's humanitarian needs extending its response in 2011 to those who have not yet been reached, tackling endemic poverty and disparities throughout the country, 
and maintaining its commitment to bring lasting, positive change to the lives of Haiti's children. This is Jane O'Brien reporting for UNICEF Television. Unite for children.